today in the spotlight is a Toronto-based speaker and musician, Wally Flo Shaw. At the age of just 20 years old, Wally has worked with many prominent artists and was selected as Canada's top 20 under 20. So let's shine the spotlight on his road to success. Thank you for joining me, Wally. Now, Wally Flo Shaw, where does the flow come in from? Well, it takes me back to when I was younger, when I was about 12 or 13, and I first started rapping and uh, experimenting with music. I had two friends, Ennis and Saf, they, uh, they've grown up with me, and every time they would ask me to rap, they would always compliment me and say that my rhythm was good, that the flow was very good, and that's where the sort of it just came from. And ever since then, I've stuck with it. It's been something that I've also carried over in my spoken word writing and having a certain rhythmic flow in spoken word writing and just writing in general. So that's where that sort of just like came from in the beginning, the origins of the name. Now, Wally, you have accomplished quite a lot. Um, to name a few things, uh, you have received Canada's Top 20 Under 20 Awards. Um, media outlets like the Toronto Star and the Huffington Post have written about you. Um, you have performed in front of 50,000 people. Uh, you have raised a million dollars for United Way of Peel. And, you have wor and your, fe your work has been featured on Omni, MTV, and Rogers. Um, now, your path is a glorious one, but it wasn't without all the hardships. So, tell us a bit about your experiences. Well, I mean, there was a lot of things that were, that were challenging growing up, and um, a lot of personal things that, that I felt like were bringing me down, and a lot of it you know, also comes down to being an immigrant youth. And, and you know, coming to Canada when, when I was younger, and uh, you know, growing up with different cultural pressures, and also trying to fit in, trying to find out, you know, where do I belong, and also I think as a young person, finding your identity, right? Like, who are you, and like, you know, where do you fit in, and stuff. Like, it was those were like the big, you know, sort of challenges and things that I was dealing with. But um, but I know that all for all the viewers that are that are you know listening and watching this right now, I know that maybe you are going through things like this as well. But I think. The biggest thing in terms of you know everything that I've experienced and, and and all the hardships that I have was like I remember that I just had a dream that I wanted to follow and no matter what happened I just I always wanted to follow that dream and that's sort of like what carried me through all the hardships and experiences you know now while you were going through all these hardships you had a teacher in high school Kothra high school secondary school and um, who was your social science teacher and her name was Kirby McIntosh yeah. shout outs to Miss McIntosh yeah. for giving us Wally <laughs> and uh, she became your mentor yes so looking at your own experience how important is it to relate to your teacher and be able to speak to your teachers it's absolutely important. It's, it's, I think, the most important thing ever because sometimes when you can't talk to your parents or when you don't know who your friends are or how you can talk to your friends about certain things, you have another person, someone that can just give you some advice and give you a different perspective. And for me, that was Miss McIntosh, but it was also many other teachers too. Another really, really good teacher that I had uh, was named Miss Riley, and I had Miss Riley for my grade 10 English class. And I remember one day I walked in, I wasn't having a good day, I was feeling pretty down. And I was in the back of her class and she sort of noticed I wasn't feeling good. So she invited me to her English department office after. And I honestly thought I was in trouble, but she was waiting for me outside her department office. And she had like this haircut that made her look like Rihanna. She was a really, really cool. She's a cool teacher. That's awesome. She's a really cool <laughs> teacher. And I remember I was standing there in the office. I didn't know what to expect. She came out and she had this book in her hand. And she looked at me and she asked me a very serious question. She said, Wally, do you know where the richest place on earth is? And I sort of just looked at her and I said, is this a trick question? Like, I don't think I know. And she's like, think about it. What's the richest place on earth? I was like, is it Dubai? Like, I don't know. And she looked at me and she said, the richest place on earth is the graveyard. What? Because it's rich full of untapped potential. Wow. And so it was like, poof, like mind blown. And I started thinking about what she said. And she handed me a book. And the book was called The Rose That Grew From Concrete. And it was written by an artist named Tupac Shakur, mm -hmm. who was a very famous rap artist. But it was a book of his poetry. And it was just talking about his emotions, his thoughts, his feelings, what he went through when he was younger. And it was something that really, really inspired me. And it was because I had that teacher that I trusted, that I had a good relationship with, that gave me something that carried me forward, that fueled my passion and inspired me. And I remember reading Tupac's poetry and saying, wow, this is amazing. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. This is inspiring me to do my own work. And it just goes to show that the impact a teacher can have 
And sometimes that's the difference between, you know, having something shape your life and give you a direct focus as to what you want to do. And that was a really big moment for me personally in terms of shaping my dream and bringing me forward in terms of doing my own poetry. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of schools, you like talking to the youth and um, conveying your message in, in forms of like speeches and hip hop songs and spoken word right. poems. Um, I have read you even want to be a high school teacher That's yourself right. in the future. Yeah. So what are the main messages that you would want to convey to the youth today? Well, there's two main things that I want to tell the youth. And the first thing is to find your gift. What are, what are, like, find your passion. What is it that really, like, makes you happy? When you wake up every morning, what is it that you look forward to doing? Is it playing basketball? Is it interviewing people on TV? Is it doing spoken word poetry? Is it, you know, being a director and being behind the camera? What is it that you like to do? Find that. And when you find that, stick with it. That is the most important thing. And there's a really good quote. It's, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. That's true. And yeah. so... That's the first message. I want every child, to every youth watching this program, find your gift, find your passion. And secondly, and what I think is also very important, is to find an issue that you care about. Is it poverty? Is it mental health? Have you been bullied? What are some things that you've personally experienced or that you've seen other people experience that you want to change about the world? Do you want to stop bullying? You know, do you want to help people that are in poverty, that are homeless? Like, what is it that you care about? Because once you combine your gift and an issue that you care about, that is an unstoppable force, and that is what's going to change the world. So those are my two big things that I want to share with every youth. That's great. Those are great messages. Now, uh, three months ago, about three months ago, uh, you spoke to 500 Canadian college and university educators yes. uh, in Vancouver at a conference. And there was a very strong message um, within the poem you recited in front of them, and with their help as well. Yeah. Let's look at it. So if I start with a bit of poetry this morning. Okay. But I need you guys to help me out. What I want to share with you is a song called Change the World. And the, the chorus of the song is very simple. It goes like this. I think that we can change the world. When I say I think that we can, I need everyone to say together, change the world. Can we try it? Can we try it? Yeah. All right. I think that we can. I think the weekend change the world. I think the weekend change the world. I think the weekend change the world. So let me show you. I think we can change the world. What are some of the things you want to change in the world? Well, one of the big things for me, um, and talking about that specifically, uh, change the world. Um, I want to help with bullying because a lot of kids that. You know that that are in schools, they get bullied a lot, and I personally remember being bullied. And it's something that I, you know, wanted to take initiative on, even when I was even younger. I mean, I heard my first song that I did when I was in high school was called "King of the Castle," mm -hmm. and that was about bullying as well. And so, change the world. Actually, I made it into a music video as well. Me and the Peel School Board here in, in Mississauga and Brampton, uh, we collaborated together to make a music video for it, and we got the kids in schools to watch it and to actually take a pledge. And so over 150,000 kids in this board watched that video and they were taking pledges as to what they would do to stop bullying. And so many of these kids and many of the teachers said, you know what, I wanna, I wanna smile at people. I wanna help people when they look sad. I wanna do this or that. And that was so important for me. And, I, and that's, that's why it just, I feel so passionate about it because I see other kids that are passionate about it too, right? And I think that if I can use my art to make a difference in the world, then, then I'm really happy and I'm really blessed at the end of the day. And that's why I want to do spoken word and rap. And mm -hmm. that's sort of like what I want to change. I want to help kids that are being bullied. I want to work with kids in schools. And that's also what inspires me to be a teacher one day as well. Wow. Um, well, alongside uh, social issues, uh, you have also worked with an impressive line of artists, <laughs> which includes my favorite, Selena Gomez, uh, Billy Talent, Sarah McLaughlin, and uh, you have even freestyled with Kendrick yeah, Lamar. Lamar. So what were some of the things you learned working with people who have truly made it and achieved their dreams? Honestly, I was so nervous during each of those encounters, and it's, it's really a blessing. I mean... When Selena Gomez introduced me on MTV, that was, I couldn't believe it. Even my, even my mom, she was freaking out, you know, and, you know, even more specifically, when I met Kendrick Lamar, and 
remember I was backstage at the Air Canada Center. It was right after his performance. And I was with my friend Matthew, who makes YouTube videos. And um, I was just hanging out with him. I said, you know, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm about to meet Kendrick. I started, like, shaking. I was sweating. And I he can said, imagine. Right. <laughs> this, is, this is Kendrick Lamar. And he says, look, man, like, you need to freestyle with Kendrick Lamar. You should ask Kendrick for a word, and then you can freestyle with the word that he gives you. Yeah, no big deal. This is Kendrick Lamar you're going to rap with, right? <laughs> but I remember I did it, and I remember it was the most beautiful, most inspiring, most amazing feeling ever. Wow. And, and you know what I realized in that moment? It's that if you follow your dream, and if you say, you know what, this is what I want, good things happen. Because if, I'd, if I had said, I don't really think this is going to work for me, you know, I won't be an artist one day, maybe I wouldn't have had an um, amazing opportunity like that. But because I chose to follow my dream, to work hard towards my dream, and wake up every day and say, this is what I want to do, that happened. And so to every person watching this right now, remember to follow your dream because that could be you with Selena Gomez. That could be you with Kendrick Lamar. That could be you on this television show having an interview. And so that's what I think is the most important lesson that I learned from being in their presence. That's great. That's, that's amazing. Now, uh, we're coming to the end of our episode, unfortunately. But I would like to ask you on behalf of all the young people watching right now, um, how do we break the barriers of low resources or um, you know, a lot of stereotypes or just even our comfort zones that keeps us back from achieving our dreams or running after them? Uh, what would you um, recommend that t those type of young people? How can they get out and achieve their spotlight as well? Yeah, I mean, there's no one real clear-cut answer to that question, but there's a lot of things. Like for me personally, in my own experiences, it was having the mentors, like the teachers. It was having my art form. Finding my gift at a young age was so important because whenever I felt like I was sad or whenever I was going through something, I could just write some poetry about it. And that helped me get through so much of my own personal obstacles and barriers. And even to this day, when I, whenever I go through something, I'm still writing. I'm still talking about it through my poetry. And I think that's really, really big. But also for kids that want to find their own spotlight and find their own, like, you know, way to express themselves, like, don't be afraid to get out there. Don't be afraid to ask for opportunity. Don't be afraid to, to send that one email and say, you know what, I heard you had an open mic. I want to come perform. Because you never know. If you don't ask for an opportunity, the answer will always be no. That's true. And so I think we need to make more of an effort and say, okay, this is something I want to do. This is how I can get involved and to do it, right? But it all comes down to, is this your dream, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things. But I also think that, as I mentioned before, if you take your gift and your issue and you combine it together, that's an unstoppable force and it will guide you through everything. So those are my two cents. Lastly, Wally, you have taught us so much throughout this episode and I would love it if you can yeah. leave us with a line or two of, your, of one of your poems or a quote. Yeah, for sure. Um, one of the quotes that relates back to the poem, Change the World, that I recently came across is the following. Don't let the world change your smile, let your smile change the world. And I think that quote's so important because it should guide you through everything and we can all smile. It's such a little thing, but it's so important to smile and to remember to smile every single day. And so I hope that inspired you and I want to say thank you for having me on your show. This has been really, really fun. Well, that touched my heart. I'm sure it touched many hearts as well and thank you so much for joining us and we wish you nothing but great heights in life and to everyone watching i would just like to tell you that if you would like to read more about wally or get connected with him go to wallyflosha.com and you can also follow him on all his social media sites or just wait i'm sure he's going to be on your tv very very soon <laughs> um i'm ayushi sharman till next time keep dreaming Number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV.